Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the IMAA's Insights and Innovation Series. Today, we have one of our uh, favorite partners, ARN, joining us today, and the amazing Lena and Adam, who's head of product and innovation, um, uh, are joining us. And Lena's obviously the indie sales director. Today, they're going to talk through sound, the future battleground. Jeez, it sounds exciting. Um, and it's technological and, and the evolution of it and, and what that means to you guys. So without further ado, I will hand over to Lena to take over and I'll keep my big fat mouth shut. Amazing. Thank you, Sam. And thanks for the introduction. Um, as Sam mentioned, my name is Lena Rapley. I head up our independent agency teams for the Sydney and Melbourne markets in particular. Um, and I've got a few of our reps on the call as well. So please feel free to say hello. Um, at ARM, we're very fortunate to work in a really dynamic media. With audio booming, we're excited to be defining it. And we hope that today really offers some inspiration on what the future of audio can really look like and how it connects and continues to evolve. Before I introduce our speaker, I did wanna say that we'll be running a really quick quiz question at the end, um, where you can actually win a um, Google Nest Mini. Um, so please make sure towards the end, I'll pop back up. You have that comment box up. Um, we'll ask the question and the first person to write that down correctly will win. So, um, as Sam teased earlier, today I welcome Adam Williams, our Head of Product and Innovation. Adam and I have been working together at ARM for over a decade, and across that time, I've seen just how much passion and energy he really has for creativity and innovation. Adam also loves consumer psychology and understanding why we make the choices we do, which I know we're, we're always asking those questions every single day. And to that end, he studied at several prestigious international institutions, including, including the Kellogg Business School, Harvard, Stanford, Yale, and the London Business School. I can't believe it. I've studied at like one place in New Zealand. So that's <laughs> like phenomenal. Um, so he has a very well-rounded um, you know, scope of expertise and international view on what we do in media and marketing. And then finally, if he wasn't having fun with us today um, running this presentation, he would actually be surely happily playing with his six-year-old Indiana. So please welcome Adam um, and I'll hand over to you. Thanks so much, Lena, for that lovely introduction. And yes, I'm always happy to be playing with Indiana, who's the little light of my life. Sharing my window with you now uh, and audio, because that helps. Now, the audio is a bit quiet, guys, so I do apologize. Uh, and I'll put David Bowie on the screen and we'll be ready to take off. And it looks like we are just about there. My computer's not the fastest, I apologize. Here we go. Great. So can somebody just confirm you can see that on your screen? We can see and hear you. We're good. Fantastic. So thank you so much for that. As the great man, Mr. Bowie says, tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming. So please do turn up the volume and listen very closely as I tell you why sound is the new battleground for brands. And it's not just my opinion. You just need to look at the evidence. For example, you know, brands as esteemed and respected as the BBC believe that listening to articles is the future of consuming content. But let's say, what do you think the New York Times would say about that? Well, they actually bought a startup that turns articles into audio and have now launched the New York Times audio app to house all of the, the plethora of audio content that only say five years ago would have only been released via print. So you've got a pretty big battleground going on there. Then Twitter released a new voice tweet to make that platform a bit more human. And Facebook said, okay, well, we'll see you that and we'll raise you sound bites and we'll throw in sound emojis for good measure. So you've got another little battleground going on there. YouTube woke up one day and they went, you know what? It's not all about video. And they've launched some audio ads to take aim at Spotify. Then you've got Google and Apple waging war for your ears in the car before cars become driverless. Now, what are we going to do when we don't have to drive anymore? Well, as per this research, you'll see at the bottom 35% of us say that we will just continue to operate the car. And other than uh, people who say they'll watch a bit of TV, 21% there, that audio's place in the car is pretty much assured and nothing much will change. I do draw your attention though, to the one fourth from the bottom, where 7% of people say that if they don't have to have their hands on the wheel anymore, they will do some romance. And to that I say, number one, I hope their windows are tinted, and number two, I hope they're not in the car by themselves. But until then, auto brands are partnering with audio brands 
to differentiate themselves and give consumers another reason to buy them instead of their competitors. For example, Ford have got this beautiful Bang & Olufsen soundbar across the dash of one of their American models, and Cadillac have got a model with 36 AKG speakers in it. Now, some of those are for audio quality, but others uh, work as noise cancelling so they can keep the cabin quieter, and others work more like an intercom so the people in the front don't have to shout for the people in the back to be able to hear them. But that pales in comparison to Bentley, who have created this driver vehicle music synchronization, which is just a really cumbersome way of saying they use AI to match the music to the drive. For example, the music is connected or the technology is connected to the RPMs, to the speed. It knows whether you're doing on a freeway drive, for example, or if you're stop start, and it will create the perfect driving companion soundtrack for whatever your drive is. If we flip this script, you've got Sony, who are you know, largely an audio company, partnering with an auto company to launch their own electric car. And it's actually quite a good looking specimen, as you can see there as well. But it's more than just cars. If you go to the health industry, this is huge for audio and voice. Now you've got Amazon Alexa allow, allowing you to talk to uh, doctors from your home via their Echo Smart devices. They've also got their Halo Fitness Tracker, which listens to your voice to be able to diagnose your mental and physical wellness. Of course, Apple have got health tech in their watches, but they're now putting it into AirPods as well. And as I said, there is a lot more brands getting into this space as there are also in the hospitality industry as well. And you'll see a lot more smart speakers in hotel rooms as the primary interface to get things done when you're staying at a hotel. Something a little bit closer to the bone for ARN is Station Head because they're making it possible for anyone to launch their own radio station through their app. Now, this allows you to stream music through Apple Music or Spotify to take callers and importantly, to make money. And beyond that, so I'm just saying that maybe one of you is the next Carl and Jackie O, I'm not sure. But beyond this, of course, social audio was really big about a year ago. Clubhouse arrived with a lot of hype and fanfare back in 2020 as an invite only app on Apple only. And it quickly got the attention of Facebook and Twitter and Amazon and Spotify. In fact, five different brands were able to launch competitive products within 15 months of Clubhouse's launching. And they are Discord, Twitter, Facebook, Slack, and Spotify. So it's a crowded battleground, but what are the spoils for the victor? Well, last year, um, Clubhouse was valued at about $4 billion. Yet in August, they were only the 35th most popular social networking app in the App Store. So not the 35th most popular app, the 35th most popular social networking app. And that put it just ahead of Grindr and OkCupid, but behind two things called Wink and Tag that I've never actually heard of. So it'll be interesting to see if that takes off this year or if it kind of just stagnates. Be interesting to watch this space. Discord is getting a fair bit of attention, more than Clubhouse lately. And I think they have risen now to be the dominant platform in this space. So we've just gone through quite a few different industries and a hell of a lot of big brands. And the question we need to ask is, why are they all turning their attention to sound? Why are they making sound the new battleground? They are only a few of the many brands that are doing this. And the answer I think lies here. It's about the science, because if you control the ear, you control the mind. Sound affects us in four different ways. Firstly, intellectually. So of course, our primary method of communication is the spoken word, and we assign meaning to those words, but not just what we say, but how we say it. For example, uh, you know, we can say something with humor, we can say something with compassion, we can say something sarcastically, and when we do, we actually mean the exact opposite of the words we use. And this is all really important when casting for any form of audio media or audio visual media. But we also assign meaning to sounds, not just words, but sounds. For example, hopefully you can hear this. That's just a horn beeping and it's a friendly one saying, hello mate, just letting you know the light's gone green. But if it sounds more like this, that means something completely different. That's, hey, get an effing move on you effing idiot, what are you doing, right? So it's amazing just one second difference in that sound can completely change the in interpretation and the intent of what is being communicated. 
Now, sound also affects us emotionally, particularly music. So different chords, different notes, different instruments, and even different tempos are all very effective at uh, eliciting different emotions within us. For example, I'm sure that some of you would have like uh, an exercise or a gym or a running playlist, and you might also have a chill out playlist because it elicits different emotions and it can also impact us physically. Now, sound is just vibration, it's sound waves, and we can physically feel those sound waves. And as an example of that, you know, lower tempered, slower tempoed music can lower our heart rate. It's almost as though our heart rate sinks with the beat of the music when it is at a particular tempo. And also sound affects us through our perceptions and behavior. Now, there's been a ton of research around this stuff, like it affects our perception of how something is, of what something is worth and our willingness to pay or it affects our perception of whether time is going fast or slow, or how something tastes. Now, there's a specific bit of research that shows that certain music genres make certain food types taste better. So at your next dinner party, make sure you look that up and make sure you've got the right music playing for the cuisine that you are serving. It also impacts how much we consume and our mood and health. Hopefully you can hear now a piece of music and it's written by a band called Marconi Union in conjunction with the British Academy of Sound Therapy. And neuro researchers have found that it lowers the symptoms of anxiety by up to 65%, including your brain activity, your blood pressure, and your heart rate. And around about now, it might be making you a bit sleepy. So let me wake you up right, with a bit more research. Right? This research from WARC shows you that audio actually attracts 31% of media consumption, but only 8.8% of advertising spend. So the advertising spend would need to triple to get some kind of parity with consumption. And this makes audio the great undervalued media. When we look at radio in particular, then it's number one for low cost audience delivery and targeting the right people at the right place at the right time. And it's very effective at building campaign frequency, number two there, and increasing ROI, number two there as well. Why is it so effective? Well, maybe part of the reason is that audio is the only media you can consume without using your eyes, right? So it's the great multitasking media. And because it's the great multitasking media, it's the great time-saving media. But more than that, it's also becoming the, the smart way to get things done through the advances in voice technology as well. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. But for now, let's look at all of the things that I think are getting louder in 2022, the things you're going to be hearing more of, starting with sonic luxification, which takes the position of number 79 in Wonderman Thompson's Future 100. It's also known as the premiumization of sound. Now, I spoke to you before about how auto brands are partnering with audio brands in terms of audio hardware, but it's not just them, it's also uh, fashion brands like this one, Louis Vuitton's Horizon speaker, which comes with its fancy little carry bag and it looks a bit like this, and it can be yours for the bargain price of $4,250. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, uh, maybe I can get a few more years out of my $200 Bose wireless speaker and I'm right with you there. It's not just fashion though, of course, you've got the retail giant Sonos, who have, uh, sorry, retail giant Ikea, who have partnered with Sonos in this kind of audio furniture, like lamps, and there's a, a wall speaker slash piece of artwork there where you can change the cover as well to change the artwork. And they've got some other pieces of furniture available as well. And then a company like Voice Gems. Now, important to note, your vocal print is exactly every bit as unique as your fingerprint. So voice gems take that uh, recording of your voice and they create these pieces of artwork and they have these art exhibitions and they create it by using over 200,000 different elements to create something truly unique to your voice. But sonic luxification and the premiumization of sound isn't just about hardware and things that are tangible that you can touch, it's primarily about audio quality. And you may remember ooh, about two or three months ago now, Neil Young removed his music from Spotify in protest to Joe Rogan's podcast. Well, he's no fan of Spotify's music quality either, as you can see from this particular uh, quote. Now, he's got a point though, right? Because uh, audiophiles have been saying ever since the CD that audio quality is getting worse and worse. And the reason for that is that streaming services and MP3s compress the music into what we call lossy files because you lose some of the audio quality 
to make the audio files smaller. And because they're smaller, you can stream them faster and you can fit more of these audio files onto any particular storage device. The new trend, though, is to flip the script and say, OK, we're going to prioritise the audio quality over the file size. And that's called lossless audio. So those files are lossless. You don't lose audio quality. Now, the first company to do a streaming service of lossless was a company called Tidal. A lot of people followed suit. Then Apple recently included lossless audio as part of the standard subscription for Apple Music. Now, that really uh, upset the Apple cart, I think, for Spotify, who've been talking about their lossless streaming service, HiFi, for some time, but there is still no launch date on it, primarily because I think they were planning to charge a premium for the better quality audio. But it is not all about lossless audio files. It's also about 3D. It's about 8D audio. It's about Dolby Atmos. It's about 360 degree reality audio, as this video will show. Now, in an ideal world, you'd be able to hear what I can hear, but I think with Google Hangouts, you'll only hear this in mono or stereo, i.e. traditional two-channel left or right. But when you have the original of this file, and when you're listening to anything like 3D audio or 360 reality audio, things sound like they're coming from all around you, like you're in a cinema in a, you know, uh, in a cinema with what 3D sound all around you, but it's creating it for headphones, and that's the difference. Now, Facebook have gone all in with this, and they're becoming largely an audio company as well, especially when you consider this video. Hey, thanks for meeting me here. Yeah, no problem. You uh, wanted to record something together? I do. Actually, I'm already recording. Wait, but like, you know it's crazy loud here, right? <laughs> I know. So I'm testing out a bunch of new audio stuff that Facebook's building, like smart noise reduction. So you won't hear any of the street noise when I play it back. And what, it'll just like disappear? Yeah, it's like camera filters, but for audio. So you can edit and you can add effects and all that stuff. Right from your phone. Yeah, well, what do you want to hear? How about, you know, could you make them sound like a chipmunk? <laughs> okay, perfect, yeah. Or, you know, one of those walking talking things? Or, I don't know, maybe a robot? Or maybe some ASMR to put me to sleep. <sighs> Love it. Okay, so we just listen to the playback. What do you think? I mean, that's crazy. It's basically like a sound studio. Right in your pocket. All right. How should we wrap this up? Um, how about some outro music? Perfect. Play us out. <laughs> So Facebook are kind of democratizing audio production and they're really targeting content creators, which is a smart strategy in and of itself. And I think in 2022, we're going to start hearing a lot more interesting audio production by having this technology in the phones and in the pockets of millions of new people. And speaking of pockets, that's a great segue into the next section, which is all about wearable audio. Now, of course, the original wearable was headphones. And you can see here over 1.3 million headphones were sold each day in 2020. And it's predicted to grow in the Asia Pacific region quite considerably over the next five years. Why is that? Well, we're listening to a lot more things through headphones and we're listening to a lot more audio. Things like radio or streaming and catch up radio, music streaming, audio books and podcasts. But of course, headphones aren't the only way we listen to audio, are they? We also listen to audio through our sunglasses. Now, some of you might remember that uh, Bose launched their frame sunglasses a couple of years ago, and they work by sh having a little speaker in the arm and it shoots the sound back into your ear. And what's really useful about these is that if you're riding a bike or out walking or running, because it doesn't close your entire ear off to the world around you, you can hear cars coming or a dog running up behind you or maybe a cyclist ringing their bell saying, move to one side. And they kind of make you feel a bit safer because you can hear what's going on around you. The next generation of these were spectacles by Snap. And these Unfortunately, they don't play audio, but they do record audio and video. So the next generation of these were Facebook's partnership with Ray-Ban to create these story sunglasses. Now, these record video and audio, and they play audio just like the Bose frames do. But the next generation, well, this is what they'd look like if you gave sunglasses to, let's say, a blind Microsoft computer programmer and said, hey, buddy, go nuts. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. 
it's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence APIs, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the pivot head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces, 40 year old man with a beard looking surprised, 20 year old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. So it's not just great for the vision impaired. Think of all the commercial applications for this, being able to look at a product code and know the provenance of a product, or looking at a restaurant and seeing the five-star reviews or the menus or the specials, or even being able to look at a bus stop and know what time the next bus was coming. So that's fantastic. But you know, what would be better than sunglasses that talk to you? Or could it be a beanie you listen to? Now this beanie, it hooks up to your phone, it's got speakers in it, so you've got music wherever you are. I'll be wearing one of these this winter, I guarantee you, and on my feet, I'll be wearing a pair of these. This year, the all new episode one by Glob Lab, a brand new smart shoe that features a stereo haptic feedback that works via subwoofer directly embedded into the sole of the shoe, creating an all new audio experience you've never seen before. So you hook these bad boys up to your phone if you're listening to music or the TV if you're watching a movie or even a gaming console and it turns listening, the listening experience, into a full body sensory experience through those vibrations through your feet. And if that's not extreme enough for you, well then you can go ink yourself. Really nice to hear again. It's been a while. I'm just really excited This isn't necessarily new, but it is still way too cool not to share, um, as are these next two things, which aren't strictly wearable, but I think you need to know about them. Everyone's working, you know, in uh, open plan offices nowadays when you are in the office. And of course, we put our headphones on when we want to listen to something. This could mark the end of that. You sit this on your, uh, on your desk, and what it does is it uses direct audio technology to just shoot the sound effectively up into your own ears and almost nobody else will be able to hear that. If they can, it'll be so faint as to not disturb anyone else. Similar technology, think of it as being in an audio shower. If you're in any seat of the car, you can listen to your own music without disturbing anyone else um, because you're under that audio shower, as I said, and unless you're under it, you're not gonna hear it. And that uses direct audio technology too, which is really handy if you've got kids and you have to go on a journey and listen to the Wiggles, or if your partner is a particular fan of let's say country and Western music. No offense to those fans of country and Western music. I'm just mentally scarred from a trip to Texas as a child. Now, moving on to some more technology, deep fake audio. I'm curious if anyone has heard about the, the furor around this Roadrunner documentary from Anthony Bourdain. Now he narrated it himself, but of course he passed away during the production of it. So they used a deep fake voice to do the narration of about six seconds of the narrative. And people really got their noses out of joint for it you know, being a fake version of him for that six seconds. And similarly, Val Kilmer made a documentary about his life, but he couldn't narrate it either because he's got throat cancer. It's a story about my life, but it's also not my life. So that voice you heard at the end there, it is Val's voice, or at least it's a deep fake clone of his voice. His son actually voiced it and it went through the technology to come out as Val at the other side. And here's how that works. Hey guys, here's a short demo of our voice conversion technology. 
we'll be converting my voice to the voice of Barack Obama. What we've said consistently is that there has to be a political settlement to bring about genuine peace in the region. The system captures the idiosyncrasies of how I say something each time I say it. I can say the same thing many times. The same thing many times. The same thing many times. And each time the recording will be correspondingly different. This thing's voice conversion through multiple applications where the results should have the personality and range of emotion of a real person. It's not just for the rich and famous, this technology. Anyone can now create a synthetic version of their own voice or someone else's voice or a computer generated voice. Or if you're like the BBC and the New York Times, you can use text to speech, speech technology. And this technology really does have the ability to disrupt the voice actor industry in particular. Reese Speech's voice technology has the ability to change the audio industry because it gives everyone the power to adopt the voice of someone else. So, instead of voice talent being paid for their time, they can be paid for their likeness. Now, my proof point there is that the person voicing that bit of audio, that's actually my voice. I read that about a year and a half ago and Reese Speech had turned it into a female voice for me. Now, you can imagine the advances in technology since that last 18 months and uh, what they can do now is quite incredible. They're actually based in the Ukraine and I was talking to them just the other night uh, they've got a project where they're getting celebrities to voice a message and they're turning that message from English into Ukrainian. So that's a little bit of a bright spark in a very, uh, very dull and depressing situation over in the Ukraine. I'm sure you can agree. Now, it's getting harder and harder, as you've just seen, to be able to split the difference or tell the difference between content created by a real person and content created by a machine or a computer. And you've got lots of uh, businesses working on software at the moment that's going to enable us to tell the difference between one and the other. But unfortunately, it comes a little late for this poor CEO of an energy company in Europe who actually thought he was talking to his boss who had a thick German accent, but he wasn't. He was talking to a deep fake voice and was convinced to transfer over $200,000 to a, a, an account of a scam artist. I don't know if he's still got a job. But on the, on the point of, uh, on the subject of voice, it's probably a good segue to talk about voice absolutely everything because we have been talking about voice becoming the next big thing for a number of years. But for example, you know, you think Amazon had their second annual Prime Day in 2016. And at that event, they sold one product every second through people using Alexa, so only using their voice. So that worked out to be 86,400 products sold in 24 hours six years ago. Now, similarly, uh, three years ago, at Alibaba's annual singles day, over 1 million people bought and paid for products in 24 hours just using their voice. Then in 2022, you would find it pretty hard to find a car that doesn't have voice recognition technology in it. You've got 3.25 billion consumers using voice activated search assistance. Now, largely that's mobile phones. It's also smart speakers, smart home devices, smart hubs, those kinds of things. And it's predicted that 70% of consumers will be using voice to shop instead of going to brick and mortar stores by the end of this year. And that I suppose is one of the great opportunities for voice. Facebook says it's the future of commerce. And I go, well, it's not the future because I've just demonstrated it's been happening for six years. So, and it's also happening right now. You can expect yet more morning to call sport. Sorry, I always feel tired on days like this. If you feel this way, try Baroka Boost with caffeine to improve alertness and vitamin B12 to help reduce tiredness and fatigue. Switch on your Monday morning. Say launch Baroka Boost on this device now. Alexa, launch Baroka Boost. Welcome to Baroka Boost. Would you like to order some Baraka Boost tablets or hear more information about the product? Order. Would you like to order a package of 20 Baraka Boost using your default payment method on the phone? Yes. Here are the product details from Amazon. Would you like to buy it? Yes. Thank you for ordering Baraka Boost. Now, what's that going to buy you? Now, don't be mistaken thinking when we talk about voice, we're, at, we're talking about smart speakers. Because think about this. Only 26% of Australian households have a smart speaker and it basically sits 
you know, basically sits in their lounge room or bedroom, but 80% of us have a smartphone with a voice assistant built in, and that is either, either in our hand or within arm's reach of us 24 hours a day. So if you think about voice technology, you've got to be thinking it's a mobile first strategy. That wraps up voice. And to finish this section off, we're going to look at the metaverse and where do we start with this? Like in my own words, the metaverse is you know, a virtual world or numerous virtual worlds where you can create an avatar of yourself and like social media, you can sort of build yourself to be, up, to, to be whatever you want to be. And the purpose is to interact with other people. But in the metaverse, you can buy and sell digital assets. And this is already becoming a really big battleground for sound. For example, the streaming service Audius has already built, built a radio tower in DeFi land, and it's broadcasting six different radio stations, everything from jazz to R&B and all parts in between. Then you've got Metaverse Radio, which is trying to become a hub or an environment for all music creators. And Wristband allows you or your avatar to walk from stage to stage and area to area to see different concerts. Now that might sound a bit strange that your avatar is you know, like at, a, at an online festival, if you like, going to see different bands in different places. But it's not so strange when you know that Ariana Grande did a tour in Fortnite that attracted 78 million people. And Travis Scott, who was allegedly the first person, or so who was the first person to uh, do a concert in Fortnite, he allegedly made $20 million out of his performance. My favorite example, though, is Zara Larson who did over $1 million in merchandise sales of hats, backpacks, and sunglasses. But of course, they weren't real hats, backpacks, and sunglasses. They were skins or basically digital pictures of hats, backpacks, and sunglasses that your avatar can wear online in Roblox. And I go, this is where a lot of the money is going to come from. People who want their avatar to have all the latest gear and to be really cool, you bet Nike and Adidas and all the fashion brands are going to be in there because a lot of people want that image of themselves to be the coolest and the latest and you know they personally brand themselves in the image that they really want and they are willing to pay real dollars to have metaverse fashion now i know that the record companies warner brothers and universal are all over this they've partnered with genies who is a uh, they make avatars really good at it as you can see there because they want all their artists to be having a presence in the metaverse and you've got all these brands, I mentioned Nike before, you've got Gucci, Louis Vuitton, they're either buying real estate in the metaverse or they're doing promotions like Coca-Cola's one here where they've created an NFT for the metaverse as well and auctioned that off. But NFTs deserve their own presentation. That's quite a big thing. I will say though, like how it relates to audio, for example, the rock band, The Kings of Leon released their last album as an NFT and they made two million dollars in two weeks by selling that so it's got a lot of value for bands and if we blur the lines between the metaverse and the real world that's exactly what kia has done by tapping into a dj that only exists in the metaverse to create music for a campaign in real life so we're starting to see some really interesting commercial things happen there so I suppose one question to ask around all of this is what is ARN's role in sound becoming the new battleground? Well, we are absolutely surging ahead with our defining audio proposition. And as Professor Byron Sharp said, who wrote the, the book, How Brands Grow, reach without attention is pointless. Pay attention to that. Reach without attention is pointless. So we're continuing to create high attention audio for radio and podcasts, but we're also creating a suite of high attention audio products like dynamic audio, interactive audio, in-game audio, and audio branding with our partners, CZ and so on. And I'm just going to quickly race you through those now. I know that contextual relevance and dynamic is nothing new to you so i'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it but the way i look at it you can do it in two ways you can do it via inventory so that's like mcdonald's saying we'll put an ad at lunchtime that talks about our lunch menu so that's the inventory being dynamic or you can look at it from the other point of view which is it doesn't matter what platform what time where that this uh, audio plays the creative will always update to serve the most relevant message for that specific moment so dynamic audio uses real data in real time to create and serve ads automatically. Whether we create 100 or 1 million different versions for you, 
It's always served automatically and you never have to worry about MIs. Not even if that audio changes absolutely every time that it is served or that it goes to air, there's just no human hands involved. It started as a streaming platform or a streaming product, but then we created the capability to do it on broadcast radio. It's also available programmatically and very soon in podcasts and you get an analytics dashboard so you can measure your campaigns better no matter whether it is digital or on broadcast radio. You can incorporate live client data, which is a real game changer, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And we can now do Metro and Regional with the launch of ARN Regional Stations. So it allows you to, things, to do things that were never before possible in audio, like having Ladbrokes put live betting odds in their radio ads. So every time the ads for, uh, sorry, every time the odds for a sporting team or a horse change, then the ads change in real time as well without anyone having to do anything. NAB did a campaign that linked the live COVID vaccination percentages to their ads, which changed in real time. And Dyson are using real time air quality data to promote their air purifiers. Really, the imagination can take you in all sorts of areas and realistically dynamic audio can do what you want it to do. Now, here's a really good example of this from our technology partners in the UK, A Million Ads. This is a live message from the Survivalist Network. There are reports of an impending zombie apocalypse reaching London. There are reports of an impending zombie apocalypse reaching Barnsley. If you do not have an impregnable vehicle, you can still access a Toyota Hilux Invincible. Free contagion, it was £296 per month plus initial rental. For the good of future generations, friends at your local Toyota Hilux Centre are maintaining that deal. It's been four days since the zombies appeared. It's been seven days since the zombies appeared. I haven't slept since Saturday. I haven't slept since Wednesday. My zombie neighbour just tried to bite my arm off. Luckily, he couldn't get his infected fingers past the high tensile steel of my Toyota Hilux Invincible. That £296 per month plus initial rental is feeling like excellent value now. Get to a Toyota Hilux Invincible. You'll be fine. Hilux Invincible available. So that's some of the capability, but what about the results? You can see here we created a 30-second dynamic ad out of a 15-second uh, static ad for Coles Express. And almost, it's actually almost four times as many people preferred the 30 second dynamic ad to the static 15 second ad. And you can see how powerful it is with those other numbers on the screen as well. Similarly, McDonald's are loving it because we did neuro research around their dynamic campaign and found that when compared to a normal ad using practically an identical script, then you see these huge spikes in attention, memory encoding, engagement and positive attitudes. So that's dynamic. It's sort of new, not brand new, but still new because it's really something that, um, you know, the, in radio, broadcast radio, it's really the biggest change to broadcast radio in a hundred years. So, uh, you know, if you are using dynamic and contextual relevance in digital outdoor or social or display ads, there's no reason you can't be using it for audio as well. Now, something even newer, is interactive audio and this is another world first for ARN and we're really talking about the same thing you've just seen with the Barocca video and it changes the one-way communication of an audio ad into a two-way conversation and whereas you know we've had the era of you know CTAs being come to a specific location or call us on this number and then more recent um, having URLs or websites being the call to action now people can interact with a brand without using their eyes, without using their hands, by just speaking. And one of the advantages of this is that it allows you to easily collect first party data with just the one word response. And this is obviously getting more important as the third party cookies are phased out. But for example, if you've got somebody to interact with your uh, voice tech, with your voice experience, and they might want to download something and you say, OK, for me to be able to send that to you, I just need to get your details. Can I use the details associated with this account? They just need to say yes and you've captured all their data. So it's a really, really handy thing. Um, you can use it to send emails, SMS messages, QR codes, download coupons. You can do all sorts of stuff with it and you get website like analytics and it enables you to secure the best wake words or you know, app names right now. So think of the wake words is like your website address, except you can't go to a registry and just save all of these names. You actually have to have a working app in order to be able to secure the name. So that's something that we can help brands with. Now, even newer than that is in-game audio. Now, in-game audio does exactly what it says on the can. It's high performance audio in mobile games with impressive scale. 
what I mean by impressive scale is around 8.3 million unique devices in over 40,000 mobile games and apps in Australia. It's up to around 330 million impressions available per month now. And the advantage of this for the gamer is that you don't have to have these video ads or display ads overtaking your screen now and stopping you from playing the game. You can continue playing, the audio ad runs, so there's less ad irritation, and there's a little banner down the bottom that enables the direct response mechanism. And we're finding really great results with that as well. Now, there's no brand safety issues with this because we're with the, all the best global publishers. It's got to go through the IAB, of course, and the App Store and all these different um, gates that you've got to get through to ensure the brand safety. And you get all the targeting and tracking capabilities you would expect of a product like this. And we're writing these a little differently because it's a different environment. Here's an example. So, looks like you're on the way to a pretty good score. I got a good score the other day. Not on here though, at the iconic, 25% off all sports and leisure wear. I look and feel fitter already. The sale's still on. Hit the banner, you know you want to. So these ads are the games, sorry, are called hyper casual games, and we're making the ads hyper casual as well and very personal and, inter and intimate, knowing that about two thirds of gamers are wearing headphones when they're playing. Now onto the final stretch. I don't know if anyone saw this bit of research last year, late last year, where a research company looked at all the ads that Ryan Reynolds voiced and then all the ads that he'd actually appeared in. And what they found was that the click through rates for the ads that he only voiced were 117% higher than the ads that he actually appeared in. So it's an example of sound outperforming sight, which is echoed in this research from Ipsos that looked over 2000 TV ads and found that sonic brand cues or audio brands are the number one brand asset for generating brand attention. Similarly, when you're looking at radio, uh, a consistent sonic is the number one radio created feature when you're running a TV campaign as well. And you can see the, the increase in purchase intent when you're adding sound and particularly a sonic identity to uh, a piece of communication. Now, I'm not saying it's all about audio brands. I'm saying it's about having a strong sonic identity that communicates all the different associations and emotions that you want for your brand. And that's why we've partnered with Sizi and Son who are the world leading sonic branding consultancy. And they are absolutely experts at communicating meaning through sound. For example, Huggies should sound warm, caring and motherly. And Royal Air Morocco should sound exotic and mysterious and invoke the local culture. Hey Adam, just jumping in, these ones it sounds like are not going to play quite properly on the, um, oh, on the presentation. Not. Yeah, and just wary that we just got to wrap up. In a yep, second. sure. We are almost at the end. I'll just jump past this and head to, if they're not going to play, the last five points to help you win on the battleground of sound. So number one, right? Remember that video is actually 50% audio. So it's AV, remember, don't forget the A. And whereas brands all have distinctive brand assets, make sure they have distinctive audio brand assets as well and apply them consistently. Secondly, digital audio is not in the dark ages. It now has similar targeting and measurement capabilities to online media. So give that a crack. Dynamic audio, if you're using it for digital out of home, social or display, then you should be using it for audio as well. One size doesn't fit all and be platform conscious. Remember the environment the ad is playing in and you just, just like you wouldn't run up to someone and shout in their ear, if someone is wearing headphones, you wouldn't have a shouty kind of ad there either. And audio is an inexpensive way to test and learn. So if you've got some innovation budgets or some, you know, uh, some liberal minded uh, um, clients, then, you know, reach out to us, send us a brief and we'll show you what we can do with sound. Now that's a lot to remember. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I've distilled this down into two words for you. Here we go, here's the two words and this is the only thing you need to remember, sound sells. And sorry, that was a bit of a rush. I had a lot to squeeze in. Hopefully we haven't gone over time. That was so brilliant. Thank you so much, Adam. No I'm sure everyone on the call had saw some and heard some really interesting points. There's just so much happening in the next couple of years. So it's much appreciated. I do yeah. owe everyone a really quick quiz question. So if you can hang on for like one minute, I'll pop it in the chat. But your chance to win the smart speaker, according to Professor Byron Sharp, reach without what 
is pointless. And so I'm dumping that in the trap now. Please respond back with your answer. Amazing, Patty. You were you were quick on it. Um, you got the smart speaker coming your way. I'll drop my details in the chat really quickly and we'll connect. Over to you, Sam. Thank you, guys. That was great. That was a really good presentation and, and not all our partners uh, uh, hit the brief on the head like that. So thank you so much. That was entertaining um, and really, really informative. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Um, and I think next week we've got Operation Bounce Back for those who can make it um, um, in Sydney on Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday the, it's Tuesday the 5th. Anyway, I'm sure you guys know about it. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone.